Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Kathleen Walter. Joining us is James Zogby, president of the Arab American Institute, an organization that promotes the concerns of the Arab American community in the U.S. and abroad. He is a senior advisor with his brother's polling firm, Zogby International, and is a member of the executive committee of the Democratic National Committee. He's out with a brand new book, Arab Voices, What They Are Saying to Us and Why It Matters. Thanks so much for joining us, James. Thank you for having me. And congratulations on your book. Thank you. You polled eight countries from Morocco to Saudi Arabia to find out what folks there think about us here in the U.S. What did your studies find and what is it that they are trying to tell us? I think they're trying to tell us, respect us, pay attention to us, don't judge us through stereotypes, but see us as we are. And at the end of the day, um, bottom line, they're people like us. I mean, I say all the time that <coughs> part of the myth we have is that Arabs go to bed at night hating America, wake up in the morning hating Israel, spend the day in the mosque learning to hate even more, or going, uh, watching Al Jazeera or television and, and, and being having their anger fueled. The reality is they go to bed at night worried about their jobs, wake up in the morning thinking about their, their, whether their kids get the education that they need and whether they'll have health care for their parents. These are people who have complex lives, who want a better future for themselves, and they want to be loved, and they actually like our values. Eighty percent of Americans say that Arabs don't like us because they hate our values. Sixty-five percent of Arabs say we love your values of freedom and democracy and we love your culture. What's the disconnect? The disconnect is that we don't listen. And so the book Arab Voices is saying, pay attention, listen. Frankly, the risk is too much to our interests if we don't pay attention and learn more. How do we go about changing those stereotypes? And I, I am also curious too, what would you say the top three stereotypes are that we in the U.S. Yeah. have about Arabs? And, and <laughs> Are they making their way into our foreign policy? They clearly do make their way into our foreign policy, and the stereotypes are, number one, they're all angry and they're fanatics, and number two, they're all the same, and therefore it's like a cookie cutter, one size fits all. And number three is they're all backwards and reactionary and they don't want to move forward and change. Um, and I, I take each one of those in the book and I pull it apart, look at it upside down, and I ask people a whole bunch of questions, and the answers give us a more complex and nuanced view of a culture that's really not angry, that's really not all the same, but does have some common threads that create a, a unified value system that one can call an Arab culture. Um, and they really do want to move forward and they made some significant progress in several countries in moving forward um, and changes the order of the day in the region. Um, so that that probably would do it. But does it enter into our policy? Of course it does. And it, it creates the problem where we think that, oh, you know, let Israel run over Gaza or let Israel do what it does in Lebanon. The Arabs won't care. Um, they do care. Or, you know, we can go into Iraq and create a, 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 a depose the dictator and democracy will flourish and it'll spread across the Middle East. No, it doesn't. In fact, what it does is create chaos and bitterness and anger at America. Um, so I think if, if we listened more, we wouldn't make the mistakes we make. And I think we'd have an opportunity then to build closer and better ties in a region that is very important to us. And it would also help us make peace, make peace between Israel and its neighbors and make peace between America and a government of policies that were respected and respectful of people in the region uh, in, a, in a much much different way than we've, we, you know, we currently do. What do most think about a two-state solution to settle the Palestinian-Israeli conflict? Three quarters of Arabs support a two-state solution, contrary to the myth that uh, they all want to see Israel disappear. But I would say that more than half of Arabs don't believe it will ever occur because they don't believe that Israel or the United States will take the steps to make it happen. That's interesting. Well, what about their take on a nuclear Iran? Are they as concerned as we are here in the U.S.? Arab governments clearly are deeply concerned. Arab public opinion confuses its anger at America with the kind of role that Ahmadinejad plays the sort of stick his finger in our eye. Uh, they don't love Iran. I think they're nervous about Iran. They think Iran made a lot of trouble in, um, in Iraq. They think Iran, this is public opinion, thinks that uh, Iran is a source of instability in the Gulf. They think Iran is meddling in, in Lebanon. 
But if you ask the question about Iran's nuclear program and, and, and uh, Arab public opinion will say, leave him alone, let him do what he wants to do. They, they look at Israel and has two to four hundred nuclear weapons and they say, what's going on? I mean, to us, it, it's sort of like the emperor's new clothes, you know. We know it, but we say, it's irrelevant, that's not a topic we want to talk about. We want to talk about Iran. But Arabs know it and they say, it is relevant. There ought to be a nuclear-free Middle East, that's what the Arabs have been calling for for years. Why the hell not, one would say. Why the hell not? Why shouldn't America be consistent in its policy and say, nobody should have nuclear weapons in that region. It's way too dangerous. And if you let Israel have two to four hundred nuclear weapons, then it's going to create a situation where public opinion, angry at Israel and what it does, angry at America for supporting Israel, is going to say, hell no, you can't stop these governments from doing it because you're allowing it to happen on, on, on the other side. So I think that the lack of consistency in our approach to this issue has created both resentment of us and also a support base for Iran that Iran doesn't deserve, uh, nor do people actually feel support for Iran itself, but it, it's a question of supporting Iran's nuclear program because they're so angry at America. And, and it creates a confused public. Oh. Again, the book is Arab Voices, What They Are Saying to Us and Why It Matters. It is a fantastic read. It's available on Amazon.com and bookstores everywhere. I'm going to put your blurb on the book, a fantastic read. Listen to it. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining thank us, you. Jim Zogby. We appreciate your stopping by. Thank you by. very much. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.